So here's the self-looping Don Smith setup with only capacitors. So here it is running at very high frequency. 1.7 is around 1.7 megahertz. It's its natural frequency. And I'm getting about 11, about 12 volts. And that's from the secondary magnetic side right here. So I got the scope connected to the secondary coil here. And this are the two coils push-pull oscillating. Just a little transistor controlling the feedback. That's it. That's all it is. Very simple. And there's your capacitor right here that this connects to. And here it is. So that's the help of the transistor doing that. You can see it there. But this basically runs forever, folks. And it's on the loop, and the capacitor keeps raising voltage. And I'm just connecting on the secondary, so I'm not even on the primary here. So a little bit, let's detect for E fields here. So I'm going to get really close to the volts per meter. Check this out. About 103 volts right now. Volts per meter when I get closer to the coil here. As I get further away, it drops. So our step down transformer basically, now it's about, uh, it's oscillating with the resonance 100 volts roughly and I'm tapping about 11 volts of it from the secondary here which is the inside coil. just the scope which is connected to the secondary completely isolated from all of this by the way see the two red ones here that's the scope connecting here and over there is the other red here see so we're just getting the secondary magnetic action but this is a true south loop system. So now I'm better, better feedback, got a diode on the secondary side, acting as an antenna to capture the field back into the plus side here and not really boosting it. So about 12 volts, a little over 12 volts now. It brought the frequency down a little. Same setup, just I'm using a diode to capture the field back into the um, input here. It's basically on the um, it's basically on the loop feeding the base of the transistor. So what happens is it essentially feeds from the field and. Uh, less power required to trigger it basically. I can zoom into that. That's all it is, capacitor, coil, transistor, loop, 
primary, secondary, air core. Just a little um, biasing resistor there. Just enough to drive this little transistor. Transistor is the, this one here, 2N5088. Right here this is what I used for this experiment. And it emits a very strong, essentially a free magnetic and electric field which allows us to couple into it. So here what I'm doing to help it out because it's such a small signal, I'm feedbacking the base here. Well, feedbacking into the base from the secondary to help it out through field rectification. I'm using the diode here. It basically acts as an antenna, the first half rectifying to DC, ignoring the other. But that's only the field component, so it doesn't really, it's, it's basically bonus. So like, um, not sure how long I'm supposed to record this to show the loop in effect. Let's measure the field again. Let's go to um, volts per meter. Seventy-eight, ninety-four. It's not super, super high voltage there because I don't have a lot. I'm only driving it with like one volt and it's the resonance that's actually giving us a strong field strength here, nearly 100 volts. And that's why we're able to pull like 12 out of the secondary here. Just an LC circuit. No batteries again. No solar, no wind, no nothing. 100% solid state. Self-looping. Setup here. Still going. A frequency 1.7. It's pretty stable. 1.7 megahertz. This is a high frequency coil here. It's basically near the AM broadcast band right now. So I got a few coils here open, not using it right now. So I'm just using the red and the green coils as an oscillating driver. So five minutes now, and we're still going. It's solid at 12 volts AC at 1.7 megahertz. So we could do quite a lot with that. So none of this over here is actually running. That's just all extra stuff I have. This is connected to nothing right now. Well, this thing, but it's not running. Turn it off completely, actually. There we go. See, it wasn't that. <laughs> you know, some people will say, right? So again, the scope is connected, isolated on the secondary, so it's not feeding directly into the system, like some people would accuse of the power coming from the scope. And by the way, this capacitor is totally solid. See, when I move it around, it wants to flicker it, but that's, that's literally what's driving it, folks. So 
So this is a very good demonstration. Don Smith with a twist, essentially. Been running for over seven, eight, nine, a while here. I just want to show you, you know, it's not a, a spontaneous effect. I mean, this is very small scale. It's just a proof of concept. And I ran like stuff for a long time just doing this. Very small devices, obviously, to match the power inputs. But um, like Don Smith says, it self sustains a proper system and then mirrors what you've got available. So I guess we will wrap it at that. I just wanted to show everyone some updates here and trying to simplify the concept for some. Just crude demonstration here. Again, my apologies for the mess and until next time, folks. So there it is morning after. Capacitor still holding a charge and you can see it bouncing around with the oscillator as it charges and recharges and cycles itself and keeps itself going there. And I've got a radio to show you because it was around the AM then. So near the capacitor, it's got a very strong signal. And as I move away here, I can get a signal about, I'd say, 10 feet away before it starts. It's still pretty loud there, 37 dBm. But as I get closer, I'm going to tune out to show you the noise here. So that's the noise I can tune into it. I knew spectrum analyzers coming in by the way, so Hold on. Oh there it is. And as I go away. Fades away and it gets really solid near the transistor. So, just to show you that it's emitting a field, and um, yeah, I had the analyzer unplugged there because, of course, people the spectrum, the scope. So I was able to find the signal much better. It drifts around there because it's just a free running as the voltage. So I got it next to the capacitor, so you can really 80 dB. So um, to show you it's this, this is the feedback coil. Let's disconnect the power here. And now we're dead, see? So now the capacitor can oscillate back and forth. We took the feedback winding out. So let's plug it back in. And in a moment, you can hear it trying to. I was just going to get a little help. Find the frequency. There it is. to keep up with it. There it is. But it's all just this. The voltmeter is off, it's not even there. It's connected, and I got the scope off. Well, disconnected. So, just showing you, it's been running, I guess, 12 hours now. 
no batteries, just oscillating between the capacitor and the coil with the help of the transistor here.